Hello and welcome to a brand new series. This is Chili Chump's Beginner's Guide to Automation and I look forward to showing you some very cool stuff around Internet of Things, running a home server, building your own sensors and devices to control things like pumps and fans and lights and whatever else you want to automate. It's going to be a fun series. I look forward to showing you all these very cool things and sharing my knowledge and my experience that I've gathered over the last however many years it's been. Remember, this isn't just for people that are growing things like me, I'm growing chilies. Uh, you could be growing a lot of other different things or you could be wanting to do some automation in your car. This, what I'm going to be teaching you in the series is going to be applicable across many different areas. And it, once you learn the basics, you'll be able to apply this to so many other things and you're going to come up with so many ideas. I know that I did. When I started working with this, when I started seeing what was possible using these cheap devices like the ESP32, then it just made my mind go into overdrive in terms of what else can I automate? What else can I do? Let me come up with some ideas. So hopefully you get the same experience and hopefully you really enjoy this series and get a little bit of extra knowledge. So let's go through a few things that you might need during the course of this series and I'll be back with you right after that. If you don't have one already, get yourself a good multimeter. This is the one I use and I would recommend it to you as well. It is a really good value for money multimeter. It has plenty of great features and it is safe for not only low voltage applications like we're going to be doing for the majority of the series, but it's also great for high voltage mains applications as well. After buying plenty of cheap and nasty multimeters, it is such a pleasure to actually start using this. I don't touch those cheap and nasties anymore. The next thing I suggest you get if you don't have one is a decent soldering iron. So this here is the Hakko FX888D. Again, I did a lot of research before I ended up with this one. I have had many cheaper soldering irons in the past, but this here, once I bought this, I, I don't see the need for anything else. Definitely something I'd recommend. So of course, if you are buying a soldering iron, you're gonna need some solder. You have a few options out there. I would recommend something about 0.6 of a millimeter or 0.8 of a millimeter, like that is. This one here is quite a bit thinner. This is 0.3 of a millimeter, I believe. It just makes it easier to melt when it's, when it's thinner like that. The other difference between these two here is this one here is unleaded. This one here is leaded. Leaded solder is so much easier to use than unleaded. It's, it just works so much better. I, I know that there is a health concern. So you really, you make up your mind about which one you want to use. If you are going to use leaded, make sure that you have ventilation wherever you're working. Have a fan like, like I do. I'll have a little fan that blows across here, just gets the fumes away from my face. So I'm not breathing it in, but it is up to you whether you go unleaded or leaded. Personally, I will be using leaded for the majority of the work that I do. I have been trying to get into the unleaded, but it's just, oh, it's a pain. It really is a pain. The next thing you're going to need is a precision screwdriver set. Now I got this set here about, oh, about seven, eight years ago from a colleague of mine where I used to work and I absolutely love it. It is a good feeling screwdriver in the hand. It has a decent number of bits. It is cheap. I think it's about 10 bucks. I like it so much that I ended up buying a second set. The next thing I suggest you get is a decent set of wire strippers. I love these. They just, they do such a great job. There are plenty out there, different ones that you can get, but these here, it's literally as simple as that. And it doesn't matter the size of the wire. There's quite a thick one, but even with smaller bits of wire, this thing will strip it out very easily and it's all automatic. There's no adjustment you really need to make. So these get used a lot. And if I ever break these, I will just get another set exactly the same because they're that good. They do have a wire cutter down below here as well. So if I want to, I can just cut the wire there, but I do prefer to have a dedicated set of wire cutters as well. I have this one and I have one that is a lot smaller for when you're working with small joints. It just makes it a lot easier. 
When you're working with electronics, you sometimes need a helping hand. And that's exactly what this is called, a helping hand. It has these two crocodile clips on the end and it allows you to go and stick a piece of wire in there and maybe a circuit board on this side and you know it holds it together so you can solder and not have to worry about you know using your hands to hold these things so that's what this is basically for personally i'm not a big fan of these specific ones because they topple over very easily and when you are working with heavier bits on these arms it's just not a good experience if you do want to get something that's going to last you a lot longer and be a infinitely more usable and useful then I recommend something like this. So this here is a very heavy steel plate and that's not going anywhere it's not going to be tipping over and the arms you get they just stick onto the plate as a magnet and they also have these clips and you get four arms here but you can buy more if you want. These are obviously adjustable you can move them around and yeah, I'm really enjoying using this thing. It's just so much more useful. You might also notice this mat that I've been putting things on top of. This here is not just a silicon mat. It is a special mat for working with soldering and high temperature sort of applications. You can stick the soldering iron directly on here. It's not gonna melt anything. Also, if you drip any solder, it's not going to burn through like it would if it was directly on this table. I am going to be using the ESP32 and you've got a choice. You can use the ESP32. I'll leave links down below. You can also use the ESP8266. This is one of the original types that I bought when I started my automation in my greenhouse and I've now switched over to this. That would be my recommendation, the ESP32. Relays are just like this or that or even that. They come in many configurations. So this here is not going to put out a lot of power. It might be able to put out some decent voltage, but you're not going to be able to run things like pumps directly off of these devices. They aren't built for that. What this allows you to do though, is this connects to a relay. The relay will switch on or off depending on the signal we're pushing across and allows you to turn on things like a little pump or lights or fans or anything like that. So relays are very important. I would recommend getting a few of them. Depending on what your application is, how many devices you want to run off it, that's what's going to decide how big your relays actually are. We're going to need some sensors to be able to measure things like temperature, humidity, etc. The first one we're going to use is the DHT22. This isn't the best temperature and humidity sensor that is out there, but it's a great one to start with. It allows us to get our first project underway. It isn't ridiculously expensive, so it's worth getting a couple of them. Then you're gonna want something like this, which is a photoresistor. This allows you to measure the light and particularly for the purposes of this series of videos, we're gonna be measuring whether the sun is up or whether our lights are on. And that allows us then to switch things on and off like pump. The other thing that you can get is one of these, which is basically testing the moisture level in the soil. I know a lot of people are interested in that. I don't use this personally, but for your purposes, you may need it. Uh, for chilies, <sighs> I'll explain it maybe a little bit later when we do get to the part where I show how this works. I will maybe talk about why I don't use them, but I'll show you how to use it. So if you do want to measure the uh, moisture level in your soil, then you can. This here is an LCD readout, which is very cool if you want to be able to get some output, some text output on the screen. This has two rows of 16 characters, I believe, and it's quite easy to use plugging in there into your device. And I'll again show you how to use that as well. It allows you to, you know, look at what the temperature is without having to go onto your online system. So if you're in your greenhouse or your grow room and you want to see what's going on, you can just quickly have a look over there. When you're working with devices like this, instead of committing like we have over here where we've gone and soldered on some wires directly onto these pins, you can use things like this, which is a breadboard. Now the breadboard allows you to use DuPont wires, these wires over here. And I'd recommend getting a bunch of these in various configurations, but basically you can go and stick this into the breadboard and you can go and put it onto a pin 
and allows you to do this without soldering or making any sort of permanent connection. I will show you how to use the breadboard and uh, we'll work through that as well in one of the future videos. But breadboards are very useful for building up some proof of concepts when you're trying to design something. Last but not least, let's talk about the brains of the operation. This here is a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B 2 gigabyte. It's a full on computer that will be running Linux. It can actually run a version of Windows as well, but it's a proper full on computer. It has dual HDMI out, these mini HDMI sockets. It has USB 3, two of those, and USB 2 over there. It has an RJ45 as well for networking. And it even has some connectors here for plugging in a camera. So if you wanted to use this to do some time lapse, which I may show in a video during this series, but you can do that using that little socket over there. We're gonna need a case to stick it in. And lastly, we're going to need a decent power supply. This is the official Raspberry Pi power supply. It's a USB-C connector, and it's important to have a decent power supply. One last thing before we finish up is the memory card. Make sure that you have at least an eight gigabyte, but honestly, 32 gigabytes, which this is, was only a few pennies more than the eight gigabytes. So it just made sense to get that. I would recommend a good quality uh, memory card. It's just, it helps with any troubleshooting down the way that uh, this isn't gonna be the cause of it. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of some of the things you're gonna need for this series of videos. I know it seems like quite a lot of stuff maybe to go out and buy, but if this is something that you're serious about as a hobby, then you know things like the multimeter and the soldering iron are gonna last you for many, many years. And most of the other stuff I showed you is very inexpensive. For example, that little photoresistor I showed you, I think it cost me 10p per photoresistor. I had to buy 10 of them just to uh, be able to justify the postage. I think the postage was more than the photoresistors. But most of the equipment there, things like the ESP32, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck there. That is a, that's an amazing little device that you get to use for under $10. It's, it's nuts to me. But it's fantastic that we're in a situation now that we can get hold of most of this equipment fairly cheaply and we can do some very cool stuff with it which hopefully you'll be able to do by the end of this series you'll be doing some very interesting things and remember this isn't just for your greenhouse or growing plants this could be for automation in your car you could do a bunch of different things what I'll be teaching you in the series you'll be able to apply this to many many different things and many different applications so don't just think this is limiting people only to the garden it's going to be useful for many other things i wanted to point out one last thing before i say goodbye i bought all this stuff myself i haven't been sponsored for any of these videos i haven't been given any of this i literally have bought this spent my own money to buy it all so when i'm making recommendations like the soldering iron and the multimeter that is based on me going out there and actually choosing these things and doing my research and making sure that i'm spending my money wisely. So when I'm recommending it, it's literally off the back of what I use. I hope that this series has got off to a good start and that you're getting a bit excited for what's to come. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode and until then, stay spicy.